Hello everyone and welcome to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 where in a series of Twitch live streams I am going to try to build a different kind of Mars mission, a shuttle constructed Mars mission. The premise here is that instead of building the International Space Station, we decided to build the International Mars mission. It would still serve as a space station in low Earth orbit for more than a decade as its systems, especially life support systems, were checked out and upgraded to ensure that there was enough capacity and spares to go through the three year trip without any resupply. But it would have to be built differently than the ISS since it would all eventually be pushed to a high orbit by ion engines and then after a few years in high orbit onto Mars. Now I'm not usually into all this alternate history stuff, but I did get this idea, so I decided to check it out whether it could work or not. Of course, uh, just because you have an idea for something that could work doesn't mean it actually will. So, um, it's sort of an experiment. And I also was trying to get this DECQ shuttle working in Realism Overhaul in 1.3. It's not perfect yet, so don't ask for the Realism Overhaul configs just yet. You'll see some of the flaws during this video. So, still working on that. And, uh, but, but actually at least it's working basically, it gets to orbit and everything. Uh, we didn't have to have the tank in two separate sections, that's good. Uh, so it was balanced throughout the launch. Normally you have to have the tank in two separate se sections in order to have the balance because the oxygen is up front and it's all complicated. Anyway, we are launching to a 28 degree inclination rather than the ISS 51 degree orbit because we want to maximize shuttle payload capacity and also because we don't really want the automated Russian modules anyway, frankly. Uh, since they carry a lot of redundant equipment and we prefer not to lug all that along to Mars. The shuttle can put together modules that lack independent propulsion and then we can have a dedicated propulsion section rather than thrusters all over the place. Without a module like Zarya to control the station though, we need to use teleoperated tugs originally designed to help the shuttle save Skylab. That didn't happen in time, but we are using variations of the tug, and so you'll see those going on here. The, the, the tug is actually on the PMA in between the Unity module and the solar panels. Because we're putting stuff into a 28 degree inclination, we could carry more than just the Unity module and a PMA or two. Uh, we carry one of the solar arrays. It's, it is actually smaller than the ISS solar array, but it's obviously larger than the solar arrays that Zarya would have had. Anyway, uh, the sort of key problem when it comes to shuttles is re-entry. And, you know, especially with uh, various shuttle models trying to get them to work in realism overhaul, they have to have very particular center of mass and center of lift characteristics, temperature characteristics, and of course, I have to fix my KOS script, which handles the re-entry for me so that I don't derp around. So we do have the balance pretty much worked out. The real shuttle, I think uh, the center of mass could vary by about 34 inches uh, in the long axis. Uh, that's the, uh, as much variation as it was allowed. So yeah, uh, well, here we've got a problem. One of the shuttle main engines decided to explode. Now, the shuttle main engine should be occluded there, and also they should have pretty high temperature tolerance given that, you know, they experience very high temperatures. So that was peculiar, and you can see the vertical stabilizer, which should also be occluded, having some problems. The problem uh, there is a particular number that needs to be written into the configuration that I didn't have written in at this point. Also, their heat tolerances seemed awful low, especially the SSMEs. So I'll, uh, eventually I work on that through the course of this video to get the numbers that will work. You can see KOS having had trouble controlling it and I've taken over, that's why it says program aborted there. But we're way overshooting Cape Canaveral, we're over Florida here and very high. So we have to splash down in the Atlantic and yeah, that's not great. Interestingly, uh, this model comes with incredible braking characteristics. In other words, it doesn't really break. Uh, so I'll have to, I guess, unfix that because <laughs> uh, it's really convenient right now and but I'll wait until I can get it on a runway before I fix that, <laughs> I guess is the best way to go. So yeah, uh, that is uh, how this is going to go. I'm working on the shuttle while I'm experimenting with this new idea for a mission. So that's the first launch, we did bring them back safely, and then on to the second launch. 
So this time we are carrying the Destiny module. And we're just using the ISS modules, I mean, why not? And uh, I also, so the construction is, we've got the Unity module there, then Destiny. Uh, then we've got some uh, of the main solar arrays from the ISS, the uh, real, real sized ones. Uh, so they'll have the real power output, real size and everything. But instead of being like wings, they'll all be in a row. And that's because uh, to give them proper orientation for the ion propulsion system, they all need to be through the center of mass properly and not creating too much of a lever arm. Uh, because they do create drag, right? I mean, they do create drag, so we want to keep them in line. After that, we need a quest airlock. We need um, life support modules, uh, so the waste management systems. We need an MPLM with the supplies. I want a Bigelow module, so we'll have the Bigelow BA-330 up front. And then we're going to have to have the Earth return vehicle and the lander, right? So there's a lot to be built, but the shuttle took more than 15, I think it was more like 20 missions to add stuff to the ISS. If you talk about just the major modules, it took a lot to add stuff to the ISS. So we've got a lot of missions to work with and each mission can carry 25 tons to low Earth orbit uh, given the 28 degree inclination. So we're talking about we could send up 500 tons uh, if we were building this Mars mission instead of the ISS. That's a lot to work with. Now I'm not using Canadarm because frankly it takes way too long so I'm just using the tugs to do the assembly. I didn't get through my ISS construction largely because I decided using Canadarm was the opposite of fun. At the end of the construction, the tugs will be brought back by the shuttle. The construction shouldn't result in any space junk. But if you think about it, if we can do this with the shuttle, then assuming that the tugs were fully automated or operated from the ground, let's say, or uh, some other way, then maybe you could do this without the shuttle. Anything with uh, 20 to 25 ton capacity could conduct the same mission and same assembly. So, you could be talking about a Proton or an Ariane 5 or something like that. Uh, though some, some launchers might be pushing it. Uh, oh, Falcon 9. Though some of the payloads would not fit in Falcon 9's fairing. It depend the fairing's a bit of a constraint on all the launchers. Actually, uh, even Proton's fairing might be a little bit. But anyway, here we are. Uh, with the little tugs, we get to so turn the station to face the incoming module. Now we have two tugs. There's another tug on the opposite end of Destiny. I'm using common berthing mechanisms here. Uh, and they do sort of have a rotational thing uh, that you can configure. But as you see, as we uh, get connected up here, uh, it's not actually latching on, if you will. So I have to rotate Destiny. Or actually, I think I rotate the Unity side to try and match up. Now for the ion propulsion system, I've configured parts from Lackluster Labs to be realistic ion propulsion systems. And these, each unit will consume 125 kilowatts. Each ISS solar array that we've got produces 80 kilowatts. So 125 kilowatts produces 58 newtons of power. And uh, weighs about two tons. So the, the, the ion propulsion systems, 58 newtons, weighs two tons, and uh, consumes 125 kilowatts. So yeah, it's gonna be, here's the overheating thing again. So obviously not fixed at this point, but uh, we'll see what we end. Actually, I think this particular descent was the worst of them. Uh, we ended up losing quite a few more things, still overshooting by the way. So yeah, um, th the whole the whole use of ion engines is only going to work if we can time warp fully while using the ion engines. So if it turns out that my Lackluster Labs ones, I, I, I've tried to use Persistent Thrust to time warp through it, but Persistent Thrust and Realism Overhaul don't play together very well, so we'll see about that. Uh, there is the possibility of using KSP Interstellar Ion Engines, which I will take a look at. I can reconfigure them to be the equivalent of... I, I looked at a NASA paper which said what the parameters of the ion propulsion system they were considering were going to be. So I'm trying to match that. Okay, so yeah, I think we've lost many engines now. 
Well, we've still got a vertical stabilizer, so that's good, but uh, we've just got one OMS engine left. Not that we're gonna need them, I mean, we're out of propellant. So, yeah. Oh, wait, there goes the vertical stabilizer. It just went poof, it didn't even explode. I don't even know what that was about. Maybe it was aerodynamic stress. I'm not sure. Yeah, so this was uh, a battered orbiter coming back down, but it did come back down. Actually, it's remarkably easy to handle without the vertical stabilizer. There is no reaction wheel on this. None. Uh, so it's really in the hands of far as far as being controllable without the vertical stabilizer. I'm suspicious of it though. I, I can't, I don't know why it should be possible to handle it without the vertical stabilizer. But uh, yeah, I definitely double checked that there was no reaction wheel anywhere. So that's the thing. All right, so third launch. By the way, all the launches are Atlantis, and that is because I can't figure out how to change the texture on it yet. Uh, I think the texture switcher on this DECU shuttle model uh, was dependent on SSTU in SSTU Labs' 1.2.2 version, but I'm using this model in 1.3, and I think SSTU changed the way it handles textures between 1.2.2 and 1.3, and so the way that it was configured in with this DECU shuttle does not work in 1.3. So, yeah, I'm gonna have to figure that out so that we can have more than just Atlantis, which is the default texture. I don't mind that, because uh, Atlantis is the only shuttle I've actually visited, so I guess it's my favorite. Um, another thing that we need to fix are the plumes, uh, especially the SRB plumes. So, need to work on that. There's a long list of items that I need to check out and figure out here. This particular launch is launching one of the main solar trusses, one of the full-sized ones. And in the midst of the solar truss, you'll notice that it actually has little spherical tanks, and those are the xenon tanks for the ion propulsion system. I'm not sure if I'm ca uh, carrying enough right now. Um, I haven't really built it all out. Um, we're sort of doing this piecemeal because it was during a live stream and I was sort of building it as we go along. Uh, there, there is that little tank in the uh, close to the tail of the shuttle. Uh, that tank contains the main reaction wheel for the station slash Mars mission and also the main controller. Right now, there is no controller on Unity or Destiny. Uh, the, only controller, uh, the, the only controllers are in the tugs. So without a tug on it, there's no way to control Unity or Destiny. But now, once we add this particular module to it, then the Mars mission slash station will be controllable. So we definitely want that to happen. But I needed to move things around a bit, so I moved the tug off because that uh, common berthing mechanism right there is where we want to put the solar trusses around that tail. And if we're gonna put the solar trusses there, I need to move the solar truss that's currently on the front end PMA back to that location. So, that's what I'm doing here, I'm using this tug. Right, currently, there is no control over the Unity and Destiny modules. There's no RCS there, so this is a bit dicey. Um, to that end, I needed to switch which tug was on what. Um, also, it's better to place this on the station from the opposite end, the end that the other tug is already on. So, we had to sort of switch tugs. But right now, they're both uh, being used to move this module over. This is the small solar panel, not the full-size one. That one's still drifting. Probably I should have just left it in the space shuttle bay. But anyway, this tug is trying to get control over the station. Uh, and I wanted to dock it to the PMA because that's a more natural place to dock to. But uh, for some reason, I had trouble with that. It could be because of those um, fuel containers. I think they were interfering with the docking port and making it impossible for them to connect, but I'm not sure. So I decided to go on the other end. Each of these tugs has an A-pass a docking port at one end and a common berthing mechanism at the other. So that they can use both systems. And the common berthing mechanism has the rotational thing, so that's what you saw me doing there, trying to match the rotation. And then with that controlling it from the side, that was a little bit awkward. We were able to dock this solar truss using this tug. And there we go. So now that's a smaller truss. Now we have to bring the big truss in with the main control unit. So this tug has to be moved off. 
and you can see it floating off to the side there, and then the main truss. Again, each of these solar wings on this main truss produces 80 kilowatts. Now, that means that around Earth, that's good enough for one of the ion propulsion units. But if we get to Mars, it's not. And probably I want more than one ion propulsion unit. I'm thinking about three. I believe for the full Mars mission plan that I read about, um, it could use as many as eight. But that, I think that's too heavy. I don't want to go there. And also, xenon production is not that much. I think like in the world, they produce like 50 tons or something like that. So, uh, a year. 50 tons a year. So, we're talking about this consuming a substantial portion of the total production of propellant in the world for xenon. So, yeah. Gotta keep that in mind. We could very much raise the prices of xenon while we're doing this. So uh, here we've got our solar arrays. You can see how much larger the I actual ISS arrays are. And that's looking like an iron propulsion ship, all right. That's definitely looking the part. Now we have to get our wayward tug situated because it had been floating off and we don't want it to wandering off. We don't want any loose debris. Well, it's not going to be debris. It's still got a huge amount of hydrazine after all this business. That's the nice thing about the tugs. I mean... Uh, they, they don't really take that much fuel to do all these docking procedures and maneuvers and all. And then uh, once you're done with them, you can bring them back down in the shuttle. This time, we are not bringing any payload down. Uh, we haven't been bringing any payload down. We will on the final mission in this video. So here, this time I thought I had solved the problem, but, the, but it turns out that I didn't. And the reason for that is I hadn't replaced the parts and back end, so I... I had changed the configurations, hoping that the configuration changes would be applied to the craft. Uh, sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. But it turns out that in this case, I really needed to take those parts off and replace them from the part inventory uh, to actually make the changes happen. So, we're going to get more overheating and explosions. And here we go, you can see the overheating. It's ridiculous, I mean... Uh, th there's no way that the shuttle engine should be overheating, but here we are. And it's always that left one that goes first. I don't understand, we're perfectly level. <laughs> so I don't know why it's that one either. So it's it's a curiosity. Mm -hmm. As you can see, the KOS does not have an easy time of controlling it after the engine goes. I, I usually keep it on fine controls during descent. And because I've sort of tweaked where the center of mass is, I'm able to use fine controls and not use too much repellent, unless an engine goes, in which case, um, well, we're just gonna have to use as much as we need. And here, once again, we are overshooting the KSC, so more tweaking needs to be done with that script. It seems to be systematically overshooting. And that's because the script was written in 1.1.3 with the CSS shuttle. And this shuttle clearly gets way more lift than the CSS shuttle does. Now, theoretically, FAR is just supposed to be taking care of that based on the shape of the body, but I'll have to look at the configurations to see whether there was some attempt by the modder to manually change the aerodynamics of it such that it gets more lift than it ought to. So, yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at that. And... If not, then I'm going to just have to adjust KOS to suit where it ought to be going. I, I tend to think that maybe I should just focus on the KOS side of things. That's easier to tweak than trying to figure out aerodynamics. So anyway, this is the fourth and last mission of this video. It's going to add another solar truss because, again, we're going to need a lot of solar power once we get to Mars. So the basic mission plan is that we're going to assemble this sort of habitat with the ion engines then the habitat with the ion engines is going to cycle up to a high earth orbit um, possibly Lagrange point possibly around the moon depending on what's convenient and then after it's past the radiation belts in particular uh, we are going to send up crew to it using an earth return vehicle a test earth return vehicle the first couple of times and the Earth return vehicle is going to uh, wait in orbit, uncrewed, in low Earth orbit, and then we're going to attach a Centaur G prime stage to it because this is the shuttle Centaur thing, though marginally safer than the actual shuttle Centaur because 
the Centaur stage is not going to be carrying a payload with it. So it'll just be the Centaur stage. Still dicey, to be honest, but necessary in this case. If uh, you use a different rocket, you can use a different stage. But we gotta carry a Centaur stage to it, and the Earth Return vehicle, let's call it Orion for now, is going to attach to the Centaur stage, and then the crew is going to transfer into Orion and get boosted up by the Centaur stage to the Mars Hab slash, you know, high Earth orbit station at that point, ready and waiting. And then, and of course we also have to rendezvous a lander the same way to it, and then it's going to do the remaining mm, 300 meters per second or so, maybe a little bit more than that, to get out of Earth orbit and on its way to Mars. And then at Mars, it's going to have to do a very long ion engine burn to slow down and match Mars orbit so that it can uh, get into orbit around Mars. And then we'll do all our Mars operations and then everything docks back to the Trans-Mars Hab again, and then it brings everything back home to Earth. Uh, once it gets to Earth, it'll capture into a very loose orbit so that it can be refueled, so high Earth orbit again, and it'll wait around for the next Mars transfer window. And of course, it can be uh, fixed up if it needs to be fixed up. Modules can be removed if it turns out, out that uh, we need to um, change a Unity module with something else that's a little bit more advanced, we can do that. And we could even change the propulsion units if it turns out that we can get better ion engines for some reason. We could switch those out or anything. So we can rebuild it as necessary. We can make it faster, not really faster, um, better, just better. Okay, so I decided to bring back down these two tugs, especially since the station currently has control over itself. And we could build better tugs. These these guys have been great so far though. But yeah, we're bringing these back down in the shuttle's cargo bay. That produces a little bit of a complication because now we're carrying down extra mass and I didn't really account for that during the descent. Fortunately this time at least the heat problem has been fixed for the back end and so now the engines aren't going to randomly explode on us. So that's good. But we've got other problems still. You're just a gentle docking maneuver, trying not to bump into the sides of the shuttle cargo bay. I don't think they would actually have done anything like that with the shuttle, of course, because little thrusters would sort of hurt the cargo bay. But anyway, calm at the start of the descent. A little bit more troublesome as we get lower. But as you can see, smooth right here. Nothing overheating. Actually, the tail end right now is a little bit less red than the rest of the shuttle because it's got better emissivity. Here we are over the Gulf of Mexico and we are looking to fall short this time. Now, I adjusted where the retro burn occurs and also the target periapsis. And it looks like I overdid it. So, somewhere in between the two numbers that I picked is the truth. Basically, when it comes to your retro burn... Oh, here we go. So the problem here is we're carrying that extra mass in the tail and I really needed to pump up more fuel up front. I figured this out eventually. Fortunately we're low enough and slow enough that it's not hurting too much. We're only half of orbital velocity at this point. So it's just because we're hitting the thicker part of the atmosphere that the aerodynamics are more effective. Considering how tight the margins are for the shuttle, given about 34 inches uh, front and back is how much the center mass can move. I, I'm interested to see how BFR or the BFS ship does um, and how much I'm gonna have to tweak that. You know, my model, not the real thing. I'm gonna have to tweak that quite a lot to make sure that it can remain in that tight area despite having different payloads up front, right? I mean, it could have quite a huge down mass up front and we'll have to manage that. So we are splashing down short, but at least we have all our engines and our tail. And yeah, still gonna have to work on that, but a little bit better, some improvement. And our, you know, we've we've been bringing back our Kerbals consistently. That's good. And our station slash Mars mission is being constructed properly. So this is the product of two live streams, basically two shuttle missions per live stream, and I hope to keep up that pace. 
I'll say at this point, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.